So first of all, I want to welcome you guys. Uh, we're here at the uh, Heritage Bank Arena. We're going to have a little conversation not only around Black History Month, but the history of hockey as far as it relates to African Americans and just the whole changing of that landscape. Before we do that, I'd like for everyone to introduce themselves, start here, and we'll go around. I'm Josh Burnside. I just got traded here, and I'm happy to be here. Good. Uh, head coach Jason Payne. Uh, been here for going on, I guess, my fourth year plus now, and uh, great city, great organization. Love being here, love doing what I do. Uh, Dejan Mingo, and it's my first year here, and I'm not enjoying the cold right now. <laughs> 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 I'm getting used to it. Right, right. It takes some getting used oh, to, yeah. right? Oh, right. Wow. And I'm Wayne Boxmiller. It's nice to meet you guys. We all met formally early, but what I want to do, Coach, I'll start with you. Let's talk about just the change in the hockey landscape because when I grew up, I'm a lot older than you guys. It just all I remember maybe is Willie O'Ree and just the origin of hockey maybe in the, the northern parts of New York. But talk about how you became attracted to hockey. It's funny as is my uh, mother and my father both Caribbean descent, uh, obviously migrated to Canada. And my mother took me to learn to skate uh, in Toronto and that was uh, obviously the sport of Canada uh, pretty much as we all talk about. But she took me to learn to skate at the uh, famous arena we have back there, St. Mike's. And I went in, she put some skates on me. And at that time, she didn't even know really what, what it was. She put, in, she put me in leotards. She thought they were leg warmers. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. I, still, I still hold her accountable to this day for that. But, uh, yeah, she put me on it. Woke me up one morning, threw, got me dressed, put me in this arena, put me on the ice. And as funny as it was, that was my first time on the ice and my first coach I ever saw of color. How rare or reassuring was it to have someone of color when you made that ascension into hockey? Now you look back on it, it was, it was, there was a lot of importance to it, a lot of significance. But it's funny you bring that up because you look back at it now, as a kid, as, as babies, as you grow up, yeah. you don't know better. Exactly. So that would, is just, was normal to me. So. That's why I, I find it so important Like when you see more faces of color in the sports, in, in any walk of life, it's got to become a norm for people. It can't be something like, oh, it's an anomaly. That's weird. I've never seen that before. Right, right. So for me, like I said, that was, that was normal for me. And I never, it never really had a, a, an importance or significance, if you want to put it that way, to me at that time, because it's just what I thought it was. Right. So. Right. So. Now talk about your, your pathway to hockey. <laughs> so I started as a figure skater. So yeah, so, really. Yeah, I started as a figure skater. So I was five to seven. I was a figure skater, and then at seven I went to hockey. So my yeah my my background was a little different, but um, my sisters were figure skaters. So okay, I jumped in too. So there's right there. There's three black kids skating, and um, for hockey wise, um. I decided to go to hockey because uh, obviously I was I was wearing some tights when I was. Younger, but, <laughs> so um, we got leotards and tights so far. <laughs> I was wearing tights when I was younger, but um, I, I was watching hockey. I went to the other side. I was like, "What sure. is this?" Didn't know the sport at all. And then I go, "Hey, I went to my parents. I, go, I want to try this. Tried it. Stuck with it. Never looked back at figure skating again. It's just stuck with that." But um. Like he said, when growing up, like you don't notice at all. It's just a yeah. norm. Yeah. And then when you grow up, then you see like, all right, yeah. Like sometimes I'm on the ice yeah. and then I see another African-American on the other side. And yeah. I do the head nod. Like, right. Honestly, like that's yeah. how it is. You but know? that's that's what we do, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's just like, I know. Yeah. Right? That's like the, I know what you're going through and you know what I'm going through. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a little head nod. Like, all right, cool. Yeah. Like we made when he came in, we made a little joke like, "Oh, we got two now." <laughs> <laughs> but but, I mean, but <laughs> it is it is a reality yeah, yeah. that in any part of a pioneering movement, whether it was baseball mm -hmm. back in the day or basketball or other sports, there's always that kindred spirit and that nod, and people don't really understand. Yeah. The nod has about 37 different interpretations based on when you nod, right? So tell me about your story about hockey and 
Well, my my parents are Caribbean descent as well. Um, they came over when they were younger, but my mom wanted me to be different okay. than other black people. Like obviously they go into football, basketball. So she's like, I want you put, I want to put you in something different. So one of my cousins played hockey, and growing up I rolled the blade all the time, and I was really good at it. So she's like, okay, like let's try some skating lessons. Yeah. Good good at it from the jump I. From the jump going on the ice really good skater so she's like okay back at home in canada we do timbits hockey everybody goes through it okay. so she puts me in little timbits hockey and i'm skating all over the ice scoring goals she's like okay we're gonna stick with this and ever since then never looked back now as, a, as an american right and, and you're from uh, michigan yep. you know it's it's always an interesting thought that how do you end up playing hockey when, you know, we think basketball, baseball, football, whatever. Did you ever have those conversations in terms of trying to help people understand, I simply just like this? Yeah. Um, yeah. Coming from Michigan, is, Michigan is more of a soccer, baseball and football. And I grew up playing soccer. Too. OK. So it was I had to choose soccer or hockey. So I chose hockey. But um, people are just like, well, why did you choose to play hockey, this and that. I'm just like, well, I just love the sport. Plus, where where we live, we're like ten minutes away from Canada. Okay. So we were always traveling to play hockey in Canada. And plus, Michigan has, I want to say, like fifteen rinks. Really? Yeah. Yeah, it's really big hockey, in Michigan. So I used to like the Red Wings a little bit back in the Eisenman days. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's back now. Yeah. Uh huh. You know, American. So, yeah, uh -huh. I'm. I'm catching up. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm flip flopping when it comes to hockey, <laughs> Coach. Let me ask you this: it, it's it's a sport where I think it's growing in terms of the NHL and and all the affiliates of hockey. Uh, I think you're seeing more people of color in the sport. Um, also, we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about there are things in the sport that you guys are working to correct and build up credibility. But for you, how do you think hockey as a whole has embrace culture in terms of the new types of players coming in that may not look like the old types of players? It's definitely come a long way from the days where, like I guess, you know, when Willie Rory played and, you know, even the, even the, the Marsdens, the, the Tony McKegneys, it's come a long way since then, but there's still a long way to go. Uh, you know, things have changed, but haven't changed to the, at the pace that we're all expecting. There's a lot more young faces that we see young black faces. And I mean, we go way back. If you want to go back, like I said, when, Dejan, when I, one of my first years here, he was an all-star in our league. Okay. And him, along with Jalen Smerick, another black gentleman who's, on, who's playing for another team in our league, they're both all-stars. We were at the all-star game together, and same thing you said. It was, we saw each other, and it was just a... <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then and we, we made sure we got a picture with each other. Yeah. And, you know, we never, we never stopped communicating with each other since then. And, you know, I always knew if there was a chance, I would love for him to play for me. Yeah. And, and I go even further back... Josh, when I was still playing hockey and I would go back to Toronto because we're both from Toronto, yeah. I used to go to the rinks all the time because my whole thing was I never had anybody, you know, helping me through my journey, through like helping me with any types of roadblocks I might have gone through. Sure. So I wanted to be able to give back to the, the community myself, give back to these kids without an ulterior motive, you know, behind it, sure. a, a hidden agenda. So, you know, to go back and see all these young kids, and I remember seeing Josh, I remember seeing him out there skating around, and I said, yeah. And I remember his dad coming up to me, and it, I still remember him to this day with, with the awesome leather coat he used to wear. <laughs> and he used to ask me questions like, you know, what do you think I should do? And more in his Jamaican accent, but, you know, what do you think I should do for Josh? And I said, he's got to keep playing. You know, he's, he's got to keep playing. So he's going to get where he needs to get to, but he's got to keep playing. And don't worry about chasing the, the accolades or chasing the, oh, I got to go play for the first place team. You got to play for a team where they like you, they love you, they're going to give you the ice time to develop, and you're going to get that. And he did, and he stuck to it. And then the following year, he made the jump to the OHL quietly. Yeah. And how many years later, he was the captain of, the, of his OHL team. Wow. Yeah, and you know, it went from there. And I knew it, and then after that, he went to, and it's a funny story again, we go back to it again. He went to, uh, to school for a couple of years, and I kept an eye on him. All these young kids that I've that crossed my path, that I've followed up from Toronto from when they were kids, followed up, he went to school. And I said, when he's done school, I'm gonna get him here. Yeah. And 
There's a roundabout way getting here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we're <laughs> never a straight line, right? Right, but he got him here. So, so, okay. so I'm gonna ask all three of you guys this. I'm gonna start with you. I, I always think of this quote by Charles Caleb Cotton. It says, "We hate some people because we do not know them, and we do not know them because we hate them." Right? We just we just really never get to know anybody. Have you ever had an experience where maybe there was an adversarial relationship? on the ice or around the game, and then you got to know somebody and they kind of changed, you know, how they saw you? Uh, I, I wouldn't say not necessarily. I think my path throughout hockey has been relatively easy mm -hmm. compared to other people. Okay. Obviously, I've had bumps in the road, as all of us have. Yeah, so you almost model in what we all hope is just treat me like another hockey player. Right, we we put our, our skates on and we're out here trying to win. And even if you're on the other side, like you said, you see somebody on the other side, the head nod, but after that, we're going to get back to hockey. Did you have any experiences where maybe someone kind of saw you in a certain way and changed? Just or like you said, <clears throat> mine was pretty easy too. Um, coming to each team, whatever, um, I played with Kalamazoo, mm -hmm. um, Jacksonville, Toledo, and then here. Everyone, open arms, everyone's nice. The other opponents, they haven't said anything. I guess so far, yeah. yeah, but yeah. Um, it's been pretty easy so far. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Coach, being in a, a leadership role now, um, sometimes people look at us as players or talent, never as leadership. How have you found a transition for leadership in terms of how you're viewed or respected? I think that's established from you as a person and your personality and your character. Um, I'm the same person doesn't matter what role I'm in, you know, I'm serious about my craft. I work hard at it. Um, I'm a people person, you know, I, I want to get to know the person so you can understand what makes them tick. And the struggles that these guys, you know, fortunately for them have not really gone through. I've been through yeah. as a player. I mean, I did the sport, played it for 14 years and I've had the N word thrown at me. I've had fans throw stuff at me. I've had fans mock me from behind the glass and, you know, in multiple leagues I've been in. And in my younger years, when that stuff was happening, it's like you don't know how to handle it. It's all new to you. Right. So right. It's, it's a fight or flight. And for me, it was about fighting. Right. And that was the role I took up through my whole playing career. Even to the point where as later in my career when if that would happen, people knew they had to answer. Yeah. And fortunately for enough that hockey back then, they allowed that in the pro leagues and in, in the upper junior leagues. But later on in my career when that stuff started happening, it's about how you handle it. You know, can I fight it? Yeah, for sure if it's on the ice. Yeah. But if you let them know that it affects you, then you let them win. Right. You, don't let, you don't let those words have that effect on you. Don't let them control your emotion. Don't let them live in your head. You know, you, they, they realize that that doesn't affect you and you just keep playing and move on. Yeah. And, and they have no significance in your life. It goes away and that the words have less impact. It's unfortunate because that's just the way society is. So when we come in, we have to have this disarming character, have a smile on our face. And, you know, whereas other people can walk in and they can have a bad day and be moody and grumpy and no one's going to initially judge them right away. Right, right. We have to have that disarming quality right away yeah. for, for people to want to be, even or for us to feel anyways, that they want to be welcoming to us. Yeah. Let me ask you this, and, and I'll get the feedback from both of you guys, but how does it feel to be with an organization that saw the qualities in you to appoint you to be head coach? Because a lot of times you would say, maybe I'm, I'm that person, but I don't know that I'd get that opportunity because I remember reading, uh, the Cyclones have a new coach, and I said, "Wait a minute, that's a brother." You know, I mean, I so I'm staring like, right, like, okay, let me reread that again. I mean, so somebody saw something in you, quality-wise only, not color, but quality-wise. Talk about that. You know, this organization from the minute I walked into it, I knew right away that this is the organization for me, and it was it was welcoming to everybody. It doesn't matter what race, gender is welcome to everybody. And it's just for what you do. It's about being, being a people person we talk about. You have to be a good person and you gotta work. That's it. I knew right away, I'm gonna give my heart and soul to this organization, which I, when, and that's what I do and I continue to do. And you know, what circumstances come as they, as they did, the job became available. I sat back and said, well, if it's gonna be for me, it's gonna be for me. You know, hopefully I've put enough body of work to show you know, that I'm deserving of it. I did 14 years playing on my career and then after that, re retiring in 2009 to 10, you know, I've been in the coaching world, the managerial role in, in junior hockey and minor hockey, and running my own hockey company back home, enough to think that I've established 
a bit of some credentials, a body of work. Right. And then to be able to show the body of work that I've done since I've been here, you'd hope that, you know what, I'm qualified enough. Right. And that's what they looked at. You know, our general manager, Kristen Rob, and our owner, Ray Harris, they both looked at it and said, yeah, you know what, this is, the guy, this is our guy. It's, it's not even a question. And with that being said, that's what you want. Right. And, and it's funny, I brought it to them saying, just so you know, when this comes out, there's going to be a whole other narrative that's going to come follow us. <laughs> and I don't think, and I think they were ready, but I don't think they were fully ready. And it came and it came fast. Yeah. And yeah. Like every day there was something going on. And, you know, yeah, you know, society wants to make it about, you know, the only coach of color right. in, in pro hockey right now, head coach of color in pro hockey in, in pretty much in the world right now. And it's great. It's a great honor for sure. sure. You know, but you don't want that to overshadow the fact right. of that, you know, I'm here because I put the 14 years of blood, sweat, and tears playing. I put the 10 years of coaching and grinding and working with young players and all these. Because it's funny, all the, all the players when I retired and I was giving back to the community and helping develop and giving back to them, being that positive role model for these kids. These are all the kids that are right now walking through our doors to play on our ice that I'm coaching. Well, you know, I've always said, you know, we don't want to be considered, quote, a black coach. We're just a coach that happens to be black. And there's a big distinct difference in that. For you guys, when you walked in or when you were here and realized that the coach looks like me, like how rare is that or is this a first time for you? Or talk about just knowing that he could relate to you in ways that maybe someone else couldn't. Yeah. Um, when I was growing up, I had my, my uncle as a coach. So I don't count that really. <laughs> but, um, <yeah. laughs> my family... <laughs> My family was just like, because um, I had a couple teams talking to me, and they're just like, mm, well, my uncle was a big one. He was just like, well, he had a black coach in Cincy, assistant at, at the time. Assistant, he goes, you should go to Cincy, this and that. I'm just like, all right, I'll think about it. I just thought about it. And then I was like, you know what? He's been after me for a while now. Let yeah. me just, and he's shown more interest than any other coach. So I was like, all right, let me sign with Cincy, sign, boom, head coach. And I was just like, oh, that's <laughs> wasn't ready for him to get head coach. Yeah. I was like, all right, it's pretty neat. Um, but honestly, it wasn't for me. I was just wasn't thinking like, oh, black head coach or anything. Right, right. Just like he said, like, he's just a coach to me. Yeah, and, yeah. And it doesn't even matter about like his color. He's just like, right. He's a coach. And he's good. Yeah. Yeah. First year, he's doing really well. So. How about that? Yeah. Credit to you, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> now, was this your first encounter with a coach of color? No. Uh, well, Painter used to uh, coach me as a kid okay. in summer hockey. He's him and a guy named CJ Bowlers, and they put a, put together this team called the Skills Black Aces. Okay. So we had a whole bunch of people of color on this team, and we used to play summer hockey together. And it was probably like some of the most fun I've had in summer hockey. And um, I have to give all, all the credit to him and CJ for just bringing that aspect to the game right. of bringing everybody together and be like, we're just hockey players. Even though we're, we're different color, we're hockey players mm-hmm. and we can, we, we can do this. Yeah, you know, hockey like other sports have their incidents and we know that there's some things that have happened along the way and then I know with PK Subban's brother and and those kind of things if hockey came to you just hockey as a whole and said coach what do we need to do to make sure hockey is more inclusive and more welcoming for everyone what would you say that's a million dollar question you know that's a million dollar question like we try people try the organizations try the league tries and it's just helping about helping change the narrative is what it is. Yeah. You know, you've got to make it welcoming for everybody. And again, I have these two guys here playing hockey for me, but they don't get any special treatment from me because to me, they're hockey players. Right. They're here because they're quality hockey players and they're quality people. And that's all I want here. Because if they weren't, they'd be gone. It doesn't matter if they're what color they are, who they are. You know, and, I believe you too. Yeah, I, that's, 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 that's the way I've been raised. So, you know, you, you got to have it that way. And yeah. it's about having it's, you know, character. You got to be a good character person. And that itself, I think, will help speak volumes in the sports world itself. Yeah. And that's how we try to make it welcoming for everybody and, and change the narrative. And so you make it welcoming, like I said, have that, dis- we have to have that, it's unfortunate, but we have to have that disarming, yeah. you know, character about ourselves, a quality about ourselves to allow people to want to listen and have 
those uncomfortable conversations. I always think about that for me and, and the work I do. I always say, just come ask me. You know, don't don't guess or don't kind of make a move because I always say sometimes it's not the intent, it's the impact, right? Your intent may be, oh, I was just trying to do it, but the impact is, but just come ask us. We really want you to get to know us and understand who we are. Uh, as a player, what would welcome someone the most, whether it's race or gender, that comes into hockey? What, what should hockey do when a person says, hey, I want to take that pathway into hockey, what is the best thing hockey can do for that person? Honestly, um, I guess sometimes, like like you said, um, ask questions, you know, and listen. If you don't listen or ask questions, then you you just assume then it's 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 not the best in hockey. Um, not even hockey, any any sport. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, for me, like you're saying. When you ask questions, the best we had you know, Hunt on our team, he was asking me questions. Now I was explaining to him, but yeah. he was like really curious. Yes. And that's how Hunt is, and that's what I like about like Hunt. He's he's curious about a lot of things. Yes. But some guys they'll be they'll assume, and I'll be like, oh well, you assume this because yeah. we'll, we'll go out, and then we'll be like, hey, like, um, do you want to go to this place? And they'll be right. like. No, it's not my type of culture. I go, do you guys hear what you say? Because yeah. where we go, right? I'm just like, what, what about me? Right, right. And they're like, oh, I didn't put two and two together. Like, yeah. That. So just be curious in that answer. Yeah. yeah. What about you? What What would make a kid say, hey, I want to play hockey and I'm coming to Cincinnati to play? What would be something you want them to do to make you feel welcome or feel seen? Um, To be honest, like, be good people. Like when I came, when I come here, yeah. just surrounded by good people, and it's awesome coming to the rink every day and having fun, and um, it's just that welcoming aspect to it. And a, a lot of people don't have it, but a lot of people do, and it's just that culture being created. I, I think painters created it here, and it's awesome. You know, I think for all of us, the collective is if you just treat us like people. Like, don't treat us different. Don't treat us adversarial. Just treat us like people. Get to know me. Find out what I like. I always say if you spend five minutes with me, we're, we're going to connect some way. I mean, we, we connected with Michigan football and, you know, Milt Stiegel, and we're both good looking. I mean, so, I mean you know, so <laughs> I mean, there, there's always that opportunity to just simply connect. And I've said this to uh, people all the time when they come to me and say, well, what, what can I do or how do you do this? And I said, There's, there is one magic formula to connecting with people. Say hello. Mm -hmm. Just say hello. And once you say hello, that person is probably going to say hello back and you're on your way. But sometimes we just won't even say hello to each other. And it makes it very difficult from there because then our biases start to get in the way and the gap starts widening and we never sometime get there. You know, the other thing I wanted to ask you guys with respect to hockey was, when you look at hockey uh, as a sport, it is really growing. I mean, the number of African Americans playing hockey, I started looking at what, what blew my mind when I knew it was changing when guys said, well, I started playing hockey when I was young and, and I wanted to play in the NHL and guys are getting drafted in the first round and I'm like going, wow. I mean, has the change been at a pace that you thought it would be faster, slower? Um, for me, I thought it was going to be a little faster. Okay. Yeah, but um, obviously it's it's catching up. But uh, I always <laughs> Funny thing is, I always said, like, yeah, once black people start coming in, we might take over. Yeah. <laughs> like, seriously. Yeah. Like, Back in the day, basketball. Right, exactly. They took over the sport of football, and now you see the QB error. Now a lot of black um, QBs are taking over the sport. So it's just like, all right, maybe time for hockey, it might it might happen. Yeah. And it, uh, honestly, some of these black hockey players are real talented. They're yeah. Slowly getting there, yeah. Yeah. I think it's just windows, yeah. honestly. it's There's those blocks that there's a, a surge of them coming, and then it just kind of goes mellow for a bit. Yep. Then there's another surge and then right. it goes, you know, so it, it's going to come, uh, you know, it's, we, it's, they always say hockey is for everyone, but, yeah. you know, let's, let's make hockey for anyone. Right. Right. right? 
that's the thing. Let's make it for anyone. Yeah. Like, don't just have to just make it for, oh, let's, uh, hockey is for everyone because it's not for everyone right now. Right. You know, because some people can't afford it. doesn't matter what race, cult, creed, or culture you are. Right. You probably can't afford it. It's an expensive sport. Right. And just being able to provide the opportunities for people of, who are underprivileged. It doesn't have to be color again. Right. Just, c- right. just underprivileged people who can't. Socioeconomic. That's yeah. it. Because yeah. times are tough out there for a lot of people, especially after what we just went through and we're finishing going through right now. Times are tough. But to be able to provide an opportunity for people to be able to learn to skate and learn to play. Like our, we talk about our organization. We have the Cyclones Foundation, and they provide that. You know, the learn to play and learn to skate aspect and give you the opportunity to get out here and learn the sport. Yeah. And, you know, that's what you need. And that, fall, again, and it's funny, is that we, it's a big conversation that we have with our staff upstairs and downstairs, yeah. and it's a back-and-forth debate. But it's a great debate, and it's healthy yeah. because it's about having those conversations. But I, I was doing an interview the other day, and the guy said to me, Hey, you know, I've been, I've been watching your social media and I'm loving what, what I'm seeing. And that I go back to the whole thing about social media. We're living in a day and age right now where all these kids are about social media. That's it. They, that's all they see. That's all they want to see. Right. And the more they see, the more content they see about whatever we want them to see, that's how we build a narrative of, of what our team and we build a brand. And that's, I think, is... You know, that along with everything that we're doing and everything that everyone else is doing, trying to do in hockey, yeah. that has to continue, but at a more substantial pace. Yeah. And I think that will really, you know, kickstart and jumpstart the whole program and the whole process. I believe exposure is key, and you mm-hmm. talked about that. You got involved very early. So uh, for you, hockey just became like a norm. Just, an, just another sport. Yeah. yeah. I used to play basketball, volleyball, lacrosse. But hockey was just my number one sport, and I loved to play, and I was good at it. So I would go downstairs. I had my like my little area where I just like roll the blade around <laughs> yeah. and shoot pucks downstairs all the time. My mom couldn't get me upstairs. Yeah. Uh, I have to do homework. As soon as I've done my homework, I run downstairs, put on my skate, and just shoot pucks. So yeah, it's just it was it was an awesome way to grow up, and I couldn't I wouldn't change it. Yeah. You know, for me, one of the things that that I'm celebrating in this moment for the Cyclones is almost like a blueprint for hockey where the qualified person got the job. Not qualified black person, not qualified Canadian, but a qualified person got the job. And I think that's what has to happen in all sports across all landscapes. I mean, we understand what's going on in the NFL with head coaches. But I think when you look at what the Cyclones have done with you, and as you said, your body of work speaks for itself. You know, nobody is going to just hand you this because, hey, let's roll the dice and see if this works. We need someone that knows the game, that can teach the game, that can coach the game, that can do all of those things surrounding the game. And so I look at this organization as one that maybe others could look at and say, man, they weren't afraid to hire the right person. And for me, that's a big thing when I look at culture in this country is sometimes people don't want to hire the right person because they don't have the courage to stand by that decision. And so I would ask all of you as we wrap up here, if you would say one thing to hockey about what they could do to mirror kind of what the Cyclones have done in terms of just looking at that person for what they bring to the table, what would it be? Ooh, <laughs> you got me on that one. Um, um, honestly, um, what you said to him, just like, doesn't matter what color you are. Right. You, you in hockey, it's just like open. You got to bring open arms. You got, you have to have open arms. Period. To what color, what race? Um, if you have that, then uh, I believe there will be some change. Yeah. Some change. Not obviously. There's there's some good bad people, but I, sure. I believe there's going to be some change if you. Accept people with open arms yeah. and make that right choice, right decision, color, doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. Just accept it. Any, any color, any race. Right. Yeah, that's a tough, that's a tough question, man. I, I, I just you. have to agree. Like, acceptance. Kristen gave me that question, though. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just acceptance. Um, yeah. Obviously, there are going to be a lot of qualified people. So it's all about like your body of work, what you've done. And yeah, like, I, yeah. that's a tough question. <laughs> <laughs> well, for me, it's just about, you know, asking those questions, having those difficult conversations, mm-hmm. 
allowing yourself to drop your egos and have a full understanding and for the hockey world itself make hockey for anyone i like that so last thing i'm gonna ask you to do each of you if there's a young kid uh, of color gender difference socioeconomic background and he's watching this right now what what words of encouragement would you say to them about hockey don't stop keep going like the path is there for you. You have every opportunity like anybody else in the sport and you can make it to the NHL. Just put your, put your mind to it and go, go get it. The path is never easy. It's never going to be easy. If it was easy, then everyone would do it. But you have to understand, if you want it that bad, it's got to be a lifestyle. It's got to be a passion. So be a good person and even be a better, for, better athlete at what you do. Work at it, grind at it, make it a lifestyle. All right. Yeah. <clears throat> Same. Life, life's going to be a roller coaster for them. Um, just keep pushing. Don't let anyone stop you. Yeah. Honestly, just keep going and keep pushing through whatever barriers you have and it makes you a stronger person. Yeah, we did it, so yeah. you can too. Exactly. I, I, this has been great, man. Thank you guys so much for this opportunity. Thank the Cyclones and um, Heritage Bank Center. This, I mean, to me, these kind of conversations bring a little bit more clarity and understanding to people. And again, helps them to see that we're just people, man. We're just, yeah. hockey is your chosen profession and it's something that you enjoy doing. And I hope that young people or people that are parents and grandparents that see this say, you know what? Maybe I'll skip this sport or that sport because they may grab a, a stick or a puck and all of a sudden there's a love there that they don't even know exists because they've never been exposed to it. So this has been awesome, man. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Man. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it.